folks in this video segment I would like to introduce to you the coupling icon which appears in the connections tab of the uh, 3d experience native FEA solver release 2022x I want to remind you that the native FEA solver is in this uh, uh, 3d experience program is the uh, abacus standard program okay part of the discussion also will be how this coupling pertains or relates to the the uh, rigid bar elements of type 2 and rbe of type 3 uh, which is uh, has a long history of uh, uh, usage in the finite element codes first of all the action bar which is associated with uh, uh, connections is uh, right here connections tab is right here and towards the right you see something called coupling so the particular icon that we're going to discuss is this icon now here is some online documentation uh, from the 3d experience uh, uh, website and uh, there is more information here and specifically, I want to refer to these, uh, when it comes to coupling, there are different types. For example, there is the kinematic type, distributed type, which itself has continuum distributing and structural distributing. Uh, in the nutshell, this kinematic uh, emulates the RBE2, or rigid bar, uh, rigid, uh, bar type 2 element, RBE2, and these two emulate the rbe3 but we'll get to that later on <clears throat> some very good references to have a better feeling of what these uh, uh, rbe2s and rbe3s are uh, or what is sometimes called spider element or uh, or these sites uh, that i'm uh, uh, listing here uh, originally uh, these things started with a nasram program so that's where this uh, uh, this thing is, and uh, uh, the description of the RBE2 and RBE3 in the in the hypermesh documentation is also given here. Now, generally speaking, when people talk about these, they bring up two examples. One of them is something like that. Says, so suppose that you have a, a two-dimensional problem clamped at the left and right, and uh, uh, you're you're basically not modeling the middle portion now you can replace the middle portion with uh, uh, the rbe2 feature and that means essentially this is going to be a very rigid piece inside that you're not modeling so if you apply if because it's a very uh, because it's an rbe2 uh, element what it means is that this support and that support where this RBE2 is defined are going to remain rigid. You can see that if you apply load here to this, you know, handler point, it will deform. It compresses this and it pulls this thing out. But uh, these two lines, these two uh, sections, these two uh, lines will never change size. On the other hand, in the case of RBE3, if you do the same problem, uh, these actually change shape because these are not really rigid elements. Uh, the top one has infinite uh, infinite stiffness. The bottom one has no stiffness. And now if you look at these things as elements, <coughs> although they're not elements, but if you look at it as element, this has infinite stiffness and this has no stiffness at all. The other, uh, uh, the other example that's very common, and I'm gonna do this thing for you, is a, a, a plate with a central hole the left end of it is, is clamped and then you uh, apply a, a force a force at the handler point of the uh, you know this uh, uh, rbe that we're going to create if it's an rbe2 is rigid now in 3d experience there is no such thing as rbe2 they call it coupling of the kinematic type so if you see coupling of the kinematic type in 3d experience that's what really it is 
then the shape of this circle will not change. Although it goes to the right, translate, but the shape of it will not change. Same size. But if you declare it as RBE3, when in 3D experience there is no such a thing as RBE3, there is coupling of distributive type, okay, which itself has two, two, two possibilities. There is uh, the continuum and there is a structural. But anyway, distributive, you can see that the shape of the circle will change, okay? It overlies it. I'm going to do this problem for you later on. Now, here is the different terminologies in different uh, commercial software. So in the last round where these things uh, basically uh, started, uh, it's called RBE2 and RBE3. In Abacus, the Abacus program, it's called Rigid Spider uh, and Flexible Spider. And uh, if you go further back, this was called uh, 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 COUP type 2, C in this one was COUP CO up type three okay in 3d experience they don't use that terminology there's coupling type kinematic that is rbe2 and there is coupling type distributed distributing or distributive this is rbe3 uh in ansys uh this rbe2 is called ce rigid constraint equation rigid and uh, uh rbe3 is called rbe3 by the way these are intimately related or actually they are multi-point constraint con uh, concept okay now in CAD packages such as SOLIDWORKS they they don't call them R RBE or uh, you know something like that they call it remote remote load rigid and remote load flexible and in CATIA whose native FEA solver is the Alfini program it's called rigid virtual part so -E RBE2 is rigid virtual part and RBE3 is a smooth virtual part. So uh, this is just a reminder that RBE2 is coupling type kinematic and RBE3 is coupling type distributive. So uh, I'm going to do this problem for you. Uh, we, we actually come back and, and, and do this thing in a minute. So uh, let me go and try to do that uh, problem that I promised this problem for you. Uh, and then we come back and look at the rest of the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead here. Uh, dimensions are not important here, so I'll just use some random dimensions here. So on that plane, I will sketch. Uh, I'm in generative shape. Uh, uh, well, uh, I was in generative shape design, by the way. So I'm going to draw a rectangle like that and uh, exit. And immediately put a surface to it so I go to surface notice that I was in generative shape design I am in generative shape design you fill this thing there we are on that face I will sketch a circle that's going to be the hole that I was talking about like that and exit now I'm going to make a hole there and the way to do it one way to do it is to go to transform using the split uh, element to cut is uh, this surface and the cutting element is that circle that I draw on that face you can see that right there okay so that's pretty much it let me apply my uh, material properties so we go to uh, uh, to uh, tools uh, let me create my material I'm gonna make it properties of steel it really doesn't matter because I'm going to be using it in uh, the next uh, uh, example that I'm going to do. So I'll call it uh, uh, so coupling coupling video. Video April 29, 28, 2022. Okay. So we say okay. And let me apply that so uh, I will uh, minimize this okay and uh, where was that thing that I just created Let's see for a second maybe I have to make it bigger uh, I called it coupling something coupling video April 28 right right click apply 
I don't need this anymore. Close it. Apply to that part. And let's go on into the material properties. So double click on that. Okay, so under structural, uh, abacus, smoking physics, mechanical, elasticity, elastic, elastic, a 30 million PSI, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and Poisson ratio 0.3. Although these dimensions are dummy, material can be dummy, but I will use properties of steel because I want to use it in the next, uh, uh, next example that I'm going to do. Okay, that's uh, pretty much it. So now we're going to go to uh, uh, the structural model creation that's to mesh this thing uh, I will use uh, MTFEM because it's a Michelle mesh I have to do it myself the one on the left is if you have a solid object so here is meshing uh, let me do a quad uh, surface quad mesh on that face uh, I will use uh, well I'll use linear it really doesn't matter and for now, I'll use 0.1 inch, see how it's going to come out. Maybe two, uh, two cores or two. Okay, actually, let me make this thing bigger. So I'll make it 0.3. Uh, okay, that, that's, that's better. So we say okay. Now, uh, let's apply the section properties. So uh, on the properties shell on that, on that uh, split. Uh, I'm going to give it a I don't know thickness of uh, maybe three millimeter or something like that. T totally irrelevant. Okay, good. Now, this is where you have to use your uh, connection. This is the connections tab, and this is where you apply the coupling. There's a couple of things that I'm going to do. I'm going to hide some of this stuff. So notice that here, right there, uh, I can hide the sketch. Uh, and let me see so I can select that edge. I'm gonna hide that uh, Well, let's keep it like this see whether it's gonna cause a problem. Or not. Okay, so we go to uh, Coupling Now notice that here you have different options uh, Kinematic Kinematic continuum etc. But we're gonna do the kinematic one, right? If you look at this I want to first do the kinematic one Okay so uh, let's leave it to leave it on kinematic. Uh, ki kinematic now support is going to be that edge. Now if, if it's going to be that edge, but the problem is that these are all lumped together. So let me hide. Let me hide the sketch too. See that I can select it now. So I select this. I selected one edge. Now if you do not select support two. Uh, then automatically is going to create a reference point for you at the centroid of these things that is selected. So I'm going to leave it like that, okay? And I'm going to say uh, update mesh. So notice that I did not select the support two, which is the default. You can actually go ahead and create points and things like that. That's the handler point. Or, uh, but I'm not going to do that. So it will actually select the centroid of this. So let's say. Uh, uh, update mesh. Okay, notice that it created that uh, that spider. Okay, let me say okay. Good. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and create our scenario now. Uh, so we go here. By the way, notice that it's right. Uh, it's uh, uh, right there. So this is the surface mesh. This is the coupling. Uh, coupling and uh, yep. So uh, let's go ahead to the scenario, structural model scenario, and I'm going to use the mesh that I created right there. Say okay. All right. So uh, for the procedure, we will use a static. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to deactivate because it, it makes no difference for our problem. I'm going to deactivate this geometrical nonlinearity. Okay, I'm going to deactivate that because I want it really doesn't matter. But I'm going to deactivate it because I don't want the issue of uh, uh, cutting down on the incrementation step and things like that. 
and this is all fine okay and now we're going to do the restraint that this edge is clamped so we're going to select clamp that edge that edge is clamped now and we apply a force or a load to this uh, uh, to this uh, 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 let's see now to uh, the uh, what do we call this thing? Let me hide a few of these things. Uh, let me show, hide my uh, my uh, a part. So uh, connection. How about that connection right there? There we are. There are different ways of doing it, but the way I did, I uh, filtered uh, filtered it through the connections and then selected the coupling that I created, and it's going to be in the direction Y, some dummy value, so only a thousand, a hundred pounds, really totally irrelevant. Oh, wrong, wrong side. Uh, I put it in the wrong direction. So let's go ahead to the load. In the y direction 100 pounds and let's make this thing zero okay there we are uh, that's pretty much it so what we have here is this situation and we use the kinematic one so it's going to be a rigid bar element two which means that this this shape is not going to change it's going to stay a circle so let's put it in the front view first of all view front view Okay, so uh, let's check these things. First of all, the uh, model check. Then the simulation check. Okay, and it's going to be very quick. And then once this is done, if there are no war, I mean, if there are no error messages, warning messages I can live with. But uh, it's a good idea to read the warning messages if any. But I don't always do that. It's a bad habit. And then we're going to run it, simulate it. Okay. Good. And finally, simulate right there. I'm using linear elements, but if they were if they were parabolic elements, then they will be spiders. Would also go to those nodes. People call this thing spider. So remember, RBE two in 3D experience is coupling type kinematic. RBE3 is coupling type distributive, which itself can be either uh, continuum or structural. The difference between continuum and structural will pop up in the case where you have uh, uh, solid elements versus shell elements and things like that. I strongly suggest that you check some of those references particularly the one on Nasran, MSC Nasran, uh, because uh, it uh, gives you some theoretical background on RBE3. RBE2 is very simple, okay? Very, you know, little documentation is needed because it's just multiple multi-point constraints, that's all. Okay, that's good. So there we are, so close this, and you can see that uh, you can see that the shape 
did not change. Okay? When you say this is kinematic, RBE2 means that the, all these points that are, that are on that circle act rigidly. Okay? Now, if you want to change this thing to, uh, for example, uh, continuum or structural, what you can do is you can go to this uh, uh, engineering connection under the coupling here. You click on it. This thing opens up. You change it from kinematic, for example, to structural or continuum. Let me let me try uh, let me try structural. It really doesn't matter here. And uh, we're going to go and run it. You'll see that this become ovalized. So that circle is no longer a rigid entity. Once this is done, then I'm going to go back to my uh, uh, slides and start describing what the second problem is that I'll be doing and we work on. We are not assessing any accuracy or uh, you know uh, uh, errors here. I'm just I'm just showing you how this process works. In the second example that I'm going to do, we will actually check the validity of our numbers results. Okay, this is almost done. Uh, let me go with this, and you can see that this actually overlies. Okay, good. So we don't no longer need these. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, these files. Let me start another part file because we're going to do our second problem. All right, good. Let's go back. Uh, we stopped right there. So this is going to be my second problem. Suppose you have a, a bar like that, one end is clamped, the right end, the left end is subjected to a load, 1,000 pounds. And suppose that the, the properties uh, of properties of steel, except that that middle section is extremely rigid compared to the left and right. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is, when it comes to modeling this thing, we're going to use a coupling of type uh, kin kinematic here, which creates basically a rigid object between these two. Now, uh, I want to calculate the, uh, the I want to check the validity of the results. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to say, okay, I know the stiffness of this this piece, which is the same as the stiffness of that piece, uh, and it comes from A E over L, where the dimensions are given here. You plug it in, so we have the stiffness of this and the stiffness of that. Okay which is, uh, uh, if you work it out, it's going to be 7.5 times 10 to the 6. But now these two springs are in series, okay? So uh, what we're going to do, the stiffness of, uh, the overall stiffness is half of uh, uh, K over 2, half of K. So it's going to be this. So if you're going to check our results, what we have to do is we have to take the force divided by that uh, effective stiffness, and we better get a displacement of, uh, 0.0027. Okay, so we're going to check our result against this, and I'm, I'm going to make the model for you. Okay, but then we come back and look at the situation if you make changes. Okay, so uh, in a minute I'm going to create this. This inside one is going to be coupling of these two faces of uh, the kinematic type. Basically, it makes a rigid, rigid connection coupling between the two faces, and if we run it. If we run it, kinematic, kinematic, both of these are going to be kinematic. Both of these are going to uh, stay rigid. These faces stay rigid, okay? And uh, uh, that's why the shape the shape stays this, this cross-section. See that cross-section? This is the original cross-section like that, okay? Uh, so uh, 
this is a stress distribution. So I'm going to work this out for you, and you see the result become 0 0.0026, which is pretty much what we got in the right there, 0 0.0027 and calculation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So on this plane, I will sketch a, let me make this thing a square, one inch by one inch. Exit, pad it by four inches. Four inches. Okay, then I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to create a plane uh, on that uh, well, plane offset from that face, four inches away. And on this face, I'm going to sketch that same rectangle, except that the easier way is just to project this guy right there. It's going to get projected, and I just have to pad that by four inches. So these are CAD aspects, which, you know, kind of flip the direction, four inches. Okay, so what you see here is actually these two uh, pieces, okay? All right, so let's apply our material to it. So it's the same uh, materials as uh, that we created a few minutes ago, steel, basically. So we're going to say uh, uh, browse material. Was the coupling video right april 28 so right here right click apply and close that on that part and the material is already there so i don't have to input it okay very good uh, now we're going to do the meshing so we go there so we go to uh, structure model creation uh, here's a solid object. We might as well use the, uh, you know, the one on the left. So let's use, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, uh, a short quadratic element. Uh, leave the size like that. And then uh, for the object, select. It's important. Just make sure you select the, the geometry right there. And then we say, uh, OK. So it's going to mesh it. Parabolic element, which is fine. If you want to see the mesh, just uh, uh, up, uh, update it. There we are. Okay. So there is our mesh. Okay. Good. Now we're going to go. Uh, we don't need a. Uh, we don't need properties because automatically is created for you. However, we go to connection, we go coupling right there. So uh, the two supports. So support one is I'm going to use this end, and for support two, I'm going to use this face. So what it does. It's going to create the handler point as exactly the, uh, you know, uh, halfway between, well, based on these, the centroid of, of these points, basically. So, uh, and I want the kinematic, kinematic, right? And uh, update mesh. So th these rigidly connect this face to that face. And we say, okay. All right. Uh, then uh, we're pretty much done here. So we're going to go to scenario, scenario. Use the mesh that we created. The right side is uh, uh, clamp. So first of all, as far as the procedure, let's use the static. And uh, notice that here, 
I'm going to use the geometry, include the geometric non. You can take it off or you can leave it. It really doesn't matter. I'll leave it, leave it on. Okay, so uh, the, as far as the low, uh, as far as the restraint is concerned, this end is clamped. And this clamp, clamp, and we put a load of 10,000 pounds on the side. So, uh, load force on that face in the direction x 10,000 pounds. There, okay, pretty much it. So, we go to simulate, uh, we can do a model check. Let's do, a, let's do a model check. Everything is going to be fine. And uh, simulation check. Okay. What can we put? These are simple problems. I strongly suggest, as I in indicated earlier, I strongly suggest that you check some of the documents that discuss uh, some theoretical aspects of these RBE3s specifically, okay? Uh, or in our case, continuum or, uh, or distributive, distributive coupling. This is uh, uh, RBE2, of course, the kinematic one, so that's very simple, easy to understand. It's only a, maybe a, at most a page of documentation. But uh, the, the, the distributive one, uh, the ideas are the same, but softwares maybe implement them differently. So, uh, okay, run it. After we go through this problem, we're going to do repeat the same thing this time with distributive coupling. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not distributive one. We're going to assume that that middle section is no longer strictly rigid. Okay. So I will talk about the continuum and and structural. Uh, dis distributive uh, couplings, but uh, we'll not do it for you. I'll show it on the slides. Okay, good. So close this. Uh, if you look at the second step, there we are. Okay. If you look at the displacement, I should get 0 0.0026 type number. Yep, 0 0.0026. There we are. Okay. Now that we did this, let's go back to our slides and see what happens here. So uh, if you go, uh, this is the one that we just did. This is the one that we just did. Kinematic, kinematic. So basically rigid. Okay, this is what we get. We repeat this thing, making it kinematic at one end and continuum distributing, uh, contributing on the other end. That's why... This end, which is our first support, stays rigid, same size as the original size, original cross section. But this side, this side, which is kinematic uh, or continue, continuum, this, uh, continuum uh, uh, coupling, is going to change shape. It's not rigid anymore, and uh, the, the this displacement is not that much different. But the stresses, they look a lot more reasonable on this side. And then we're going to do that continuum, continuum. Well, both both uh, faces 
change shape. The number of dis displacement doesn't change, but this looks a lot better, more realistic way of having a distribution. You don't have any odd, dis odd, uh, you know, localized uh, uh, stresses here. Okay. So uh, when we do, uh, let me see now. This one is uh, structural. Structural. It's not going to make any difference. Same thing as a, a continuum. Continuum. Now, this is the other problem that I remember. This time, we no longer assume that the middle section is extremely rigid. As a matter of fact, we can think that the middle section is just one of these. We're going to replace one of these with a spring. Now, how do we do that? First of all, this, the stiffness of each one of these, we know what it is, AE over L. And if you work it out, you get 7.5, 10 to 6, the stiffness of each one of these. Okay. If you want to do the calculation, hand calculation, to find out what is the deflection, we have three uh, springs of... Uh, this stiffness in series, so the uh, this is a mistake. Bring in there. That is a mistake. This should be. Uh, this should be. Uh, k over 3, this should be k over 3, and that displacement, that tip displacement, if you use k over 3 here, uh, where k is, uh, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, right, right, so, so uh, th this is a mistake. If you want to do hand calculation, k effective is uh, k over 3, where k is this number, okay, and then you put a, uh, Put that number in here the number that you're going to get is going to be probably around 0.004 I'm, so, I'm sorry this was a mistake i did the cut and paste and it's not right okay so uh when we do this thing this actually doesn't show up in the on the screen okay so uh yeah mistake that is not correct <laughs> this should be k over three and this should be 0.004 Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Very similar to what, to what we had done before, except that this is not going to change, except that there is, there, is, there is this thing called use a spring. Use a spring. Okay, so uh, uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'll come to the slide in a minute. Okay, so uh, let's go back here. Uh, we go to our uh, uh, we go to our coupling. We move it on this side. Okay, nothing changes here, except that I say use a spring. As soon as I say, it says use a spring, I have to put the stiffness of that spring in the middle, so between the two faces that I pick. So first of all, I'm going to make it continuum, continuum because I want both of these to change shape, okay? I don't want them to stay rigid. You know, in real life, you know, these ends do not stay rigid in this problem. And the stiffness is going to be uh, 7.5 e to the plus 6 LBF per inch, okay? All right. Uh, notice that uh, nothing changes on the screen, even if you, if you go there, nothing changes, but there's a stiffness, there's a, there's a spring in the middle, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and run it. See, it doesn't, this doesn't change. I don't see any spring, -ish, spring thing here, but uh, it's embedded in that dialog box. So uh, let's run it and look at the deflection. Deflection should be 0 0.004. Because but because of that typo, it should not have been 0 0.0027. We'll find out. Remember, I did continuum, continuum. Uh, I want the end to change face, uh, change shape. 
in real life it does. So this n is not going to stay the same size as the original one. Okay? And I left the nonlinear geometric effect on. It's almost done. Mm -hmm. The fact that I made kin uh, kinematic, kinematic, no, no, sorry, uh, continuum, continuum, it tells you that this is the way uh, it should be. The shape should change here, okay? Uh, and uh, the displacement, tip displacement in point zero zero four, assuming that they fix that uh, uh, typo that I had in there. Okay, good. Now, if you look at the stress, again, that's the way it should be. Okay, in other words, should be almost ten thousand here. Okay, because I'm modeling, I'm modeling correctly the stiffness of the thing in the middle with the proper. Uh, spring stiffness. Now, let's go back here. So that's what I just showed you, okay? So if you go to uh, the next one, if I do kinematic, kinematic, and repeat the same problem, same number, see that? It's going to bomb out with the geometric, nonlinear geometric on, okay? But if I make it off, it, is, it will run, but it does something weird to that piece, okay? So kinematic, kinematic, this thing kind of rotates, although the numbers, and, and this is not correct, you know that this number is not correct, okay? And if you change the scale, of course, it you know, looks like that. Now, if you do, uh, uh, if you do kinematic continuum with nonlinear geometric on, again, it bombs out. But if you make it off, kinematic continuum, it runs. I mean, numbers are, are garbage, okay? And that's it. So uh, this took longer than uh, what I thought, but uh, you, have to, you have to do some experiments with these things uh, uh, to convince yourself that you know what is going on. Good luck.